Well, now it's time to talk about dimensioning in MicroStation Connect Edition. Where do we locate our dimension tools? Up under the Annotate tab, if I click up here, you're going to see a group called Dimensioning, and you're going to see a lot of icons here. Dimensioning is very powerful in MicroStation. The first icon is Dimension Element. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. We also have linear dimensions, we have angular dimensions, we have radial dimensions. We also have a number of other icons, ones where we can change a dimension to the active settings, updated settings. We can match dimension attributes. We also have the option to drop a dimension, reduce it down to simple elements. We can reassociate a dimension that's lost its association. We also can insert a dimension, we can remove a dimension, we also have the ability to audit dimensions, compare dimensions in your file to dimension styles. Now, speaking of dimension styles, in the bottom right corner, this little button there, I'm going to click on that. This will open up our dimension styles dialog. Now, on the left-hand side, these are styles that were provided by headquarters. You can explore those on your own. If you select them, you'll then be able to see on the right what their settings are. To the right, there's five tabs. There's geometry, units, text, symbology, advanced. We'll take a look at these a little bit later. Just wanted to open this up to familiarize you. I'm going to close that. The first one we're going to look at is linear dimensions. So I'm going to come up to dimension linear. On my tool settings window, you're going to see the option to select a dimension style. As I mentioned, you have a number of them provided by headquarters. Dimension style none means use whatever your active settings are, and that's what we're going to choose for the moment. To the right, we have the option to open the Dimension Styles dialog box. Below that, we have Alignment. There's four choices. Now, View and Drawing will be similar if you're in a 2D unrotated view, so they will do the same thing. Below that, we have True and we have Arbitrary, and we'll explore them a little bit later. So I'm going to choose Drawing. Below that, we have Location, which has three choices. This controls how the dimension text gets placed. Automatic means it will automatically place the text for me and do a best fit. Semi-automatic will depend upon how much room there is between the arrowheads, and if there's enough room, it'll place the text. If there's not, it'll ask me to locate the text manually. Manually, that means I have to place the text each time, in addition to picking the start and end points. I'm going to leave this set to automatic. We also have the option for offset. We can lock that if we want to. And we have some icons down below. Now, linear size is the one we're going to do first, and the second one will be linear stacked and see the difference. Now, there is an option to show basic options. So I'm going to expand that. And this is important because what you see set, in this case, I'm going to have start extensions, end extensions, and I also have checked association. These are design file settings. So who was ever in the file before me, which happened to be me, had checked these boxes and then saved settings. So when you open up a file, if it's not been your file the whole time, you may want to expand the settings just to make sure it's set the way you want to. So we're going to go ahead and see how we can do the basics on dimensioning. The first thing is we want to start the dimension. So I'm going to pick a start point right over here. I'm going to do a data, left click and you can see the dimension appears. We have one tool that's called linear dimensioning. It doesn't say vertical or horizontal. That's decided by me. So I'm going to pick another point to dimension two, in the middle of the road here, do another data. And as I move my cursor horizontal, you can see it gives me a vertical dimension. If I move my cursor up, gives me a horizontal dimension. So you decide whether it's a vertical or horizontal by doing the third data. So I'm going to be doing a third data, left click, to place the dimension text. And then as I move my cursor to the right, as I move it over, you're going to notice there's not enough room to place the text in between the two arrowheads, so it stacks it automatically. But as I move my cursor to the right, as soon as there's enough room to fit it, it will automatically fit it in. So I'm going to go in dimension to this point, do another left click or data. And then if I'm done, which I am, I'm just going to end this by hitting reset, the right button on my mouse, and I'm back to the starting point. So I'm going to go ahead and do an undo, control Z. We're going to take a look at stacked. What does that get me? I'm going to be picking the same points. Start point here, data. I'm going to dimension to this center bump, data. 
Now I'm going to place my text up here, do another data. And as I move my cursor to the right, the stack dimension will go back to the beginning point. And if I move it to that same point, do another data and then a reset. So you can see that's what stack dimensions will get me. So I'm going to do an undo. Below on the options, you see the start extension and extension. You may want to turn these on and off occasionally. I'm going to give you an example. So let's say I'm going to dimension from the dashed line here to the center of the circle below. So I'm going to pick this point here, do a data, and I'm going to move my cursor out here to the center of the circle, do a data, and then I'm going to tell it this is where I want to place the text. Data, and then I'm done, reset. Now if I zoom in, you're going to notice the first extension line is solid and it covers up my dashed line. That may not be what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and do an undo. I'm going to turn off start extension and do the same process. Pick the dashed line, that's my start. Here's my end, I'm going to place it over. As I'm doing this, you can see already that there's no start extension line or extension line. So I'm going to data and reset. That may be what you want. You may not want to cover up the dashed line. So you have options on the tool settings window. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Now we're going to take a look at what and how can we modify an existing dimension. So what I've done is I've set this back to linear size and I've checked start extension. I'm going to dimension from this point here. I'm going to go across to the end point here. And then I'm going to place this up like that. And I'm going to do a reset. So now I have this dimension in place. Now there's things that we can modify about a dimension that's already placed. We can modify the text position and we also can modify dimension line. So if I go to my home tab and I go to my modify group and select the modify icon where I pick determines what I modify. If I pick the text, I do a data on the text. I can then move the text left and right like this. If I pick the dimension line, I can then move the dimension text in the dimension line up and down. Now, if I try and pick the extension line, I used association, I can't move it. So if I pick it, nothing will happen. And that's because I've associated it. So I'm going to hit reset. If you wanted to change this point here, then you would want to edit the element. So that's editing a little bit of the dimension using modify. What if I wanted to change the text? So I'm going to go to my annotate tab and I'm going to go to text group and go to edit text. I could also do this by using element selection and doing a double click on the text, but I'm using the edit text tool. When I pick this, you're going to notice on the text editor dialog, you're going to see an asterisk. That asterisk represents the true value of this dimension. So I can either wipe that out and type in something different, or I can append or prepend that text with something else. So I'm just going to replace that with the word varies. And I'm going to apply it by doing a data in the view. And you can see I've replaced the value with the word varies. Now I could have left the value in and again, put typical at the end or something at the beginning. Now this is still a dimension. So I could go to my modify tool and I can modify the dimension line or I can modify the text position. So this is still an intelligent dimension. And even if I was to modify the element, the word varies would stay. So let's go ahead and do an undo. You can see it's back. I'm going to use the element selection tool this time to demonstrate. So I'm going to hit the space bar. I'm going to go to element selection. I'm going to double click using element selection in the individual mode on the text. And this will bring up my text editor. This time I'm going to append it. So I'm going to click at the end. Now you see the flashing prompt there. I'm going to do space and then in parentheses, TYP parentheses, and then I'm going to replace that by doing a data. And now I need to move that over. So I will go to my modify tool. I can hit space bar, go to my modify and go to modify element. And then I can move the text over like that. You can see I can keep the original text dimension and I can append it with something like typical. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of undos. 
what about inserting a dimension or removing a dimension? So I'm going to go back to my linear dimension. I'm going to dimension and put in just two points like this, just like I did before. I'm going to now insert a new dimension so that it dimensions to this point here. So I'm going to come up to my dimensioning group. And I'm going to go to insert dimension and I'm going to pick the dimension line. And you can see I'm inserting now a new dimension. So I'm going to dimension to this point. And you can see I now have two dimensions instead of just one. If I wanted to remove a dimension, I have an option to delete or remove dimension. Where you pick is important. If I was to pick the text over here, it would remove the entire dimension. That may be what I want. I'm going to do an undo. But if I wanted to say, I just wanted to get rid of this middle extension line, I would pick it and it would return it back to being one long dimension. So there's some things that you can do to control the way the dimensions look. You don't have to drop them, make them unintelligent. And now we're going to take a look at the alignment option and the location option. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of undos, get rid of my dimensions. I'm going to go back to my dimension linear on my tool settings window. I don't need to continue to see the show options. I can collapse that. For my alignment option, I'm going to change this from drawing to true. I'm going to pan over a bit. If I pick this point, you can see it's giving me the true length. As I move it down here, I'm going to do another data. And again, I'm positioning my text. And then I do a reset. That is my true length. That isn't drawing, that's true length. I'm going to do an undo. The next one is arbitrary. I'm going to measure the same two points. And what it looks like is true. But when I do my next data, you're going to see that I can now angle the extension lines and I can move them out. This may be helpful when you're trying to fit in a dimension in a spot that's kind of tight. So I'm going to do another data. And again, it wants to continue on. I'm going to hit reset. So there's my arbitrary alignment option. So I'm going to do an undo, set this back to drawing. Now we're going to take a look at location automatic, which we've seen before. So I'm going to pick a start point and I'm going to pick an end point. And I'm going to move my cursor up here. I'm going to do a data. We're going to dimension to this point here, do another data, and we're going to continue on and panning over. I'm going to go to this point here. Now, as I pick this other point, you see how it stacks it? I don't get a choice to place the text where I want. It's just going to automatically locate it. So I'm going to do a data and then a reset. And you can see it automatically stacked that dimension. Let's see what we get if we use semi-automatic. So I'm going to do an undo. We're going to change this to semi-automatic. We're going to be picking the same points. Now this is where it changes. As I move my cursor over and I pick this third point, I now get an option to position the text. And the reason that's there is because there wasn't enough room to put it in the middle. It didn't automatically locate it or stack it. It's now giving me an option to place it where I want to. So I can place it out here and then hit reset and I've positioned it. So that's placing it using the semi-automatic going to do an undo. Last we'll look at is manual. Now manual, I have to place the text. So I'm going to go ahead and place the same dimension. Now when I go to place the text, this is where the manual part comes in. When I do this data, I now have to position the text. It's an additional step in placing a dimension. Automatic would have placed it automatically, saving me a click. But there are going to be times when you're going to want to place this using the manual option. And then I'm going to hit reset. So that's what manual location does. So I'm going to do an undo. Now I'm going to show you something that manual can come in really handy. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it set to manual. I'm going to open up my dimension styles dialog. And under the general tab here in the lower right corner, there's an option that says dimension with leader. Now this is currently turned off. So I'm going to turn this on. And the type here, I have choices. I can say none, I could say line or arc or b-spline. I'm going to choose b-spline. And then for my terminator, I have an option to give it a terminator or just have it b 
be in a line. I'm going to use that. Now, when I go to place my dimension in, I'm going to move this over. I have it set to manual. I'm going to place my two points in. When I go to place in my text, if I have it set to manual and I've turned on dimension with leader, when I go to place it, I will have to place the text. But if I move it up and out, you're going to see that it placed it, I'm going to hit reset, up and out like that. I could have left it on the line, but I moved it up and out like that. That's because I have it set to manual. Now I'm going to do an undo. If I change this to automatic and I still have this turned on, I can come back later and I can affect the change. So if I position my dimension text, now if I go to my modify element tool, hit the space bar, go to modify and then modify element. And if I pick the dimension text, I can then move it up and off just like that. Even after I've placed it using automatic, as long as that dimension with leader is it was on and that was active part of the settings of that dimension. I'm going to do an undo. Now we're going to take a look a little bit more closely at our dimension styles. Here we have a tab called geometry. Under geometry, we can turn on and off globally our extension lines. We saw how we could do that from the tool settings window. You also can control the offset and extension offsets. We also have terminator options. Now here at Caltrans, our default terminator is a cell called AHT. And if I click here on symbols, you can see here for arrow, it goes to the cell. We have it set to cell and it goes to AHT. So that is something you should leave unless you're instructed otherwise. Fit options, this is where we control the text in the arrowheads and how they position themselves. So you can play with that a little bit. You saw on the right, we had dimension with leader. We discovered what that would do. There's a tab called units. And I'm gonna to go to that. And at the top, it says use working units. Our standard working units for roadway is survey feet and survey tents. So you can see those listed down here. The label format, this is how the dimension text is displayed. Right now, I have it set to MU, which means master unit, and then show the label, which you can see the label there is FT. That's why we were seeing FT. Now, I can also say show me subunits with a label. For construction details, one of the more common ways to dimension is showing me the master unit, which is feet, and then the label, which would be a tick usually, dash, and then the subunit, which we should change to inches, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. And then we want the label, which would be normally a double tick. So in this case, you can change these options. Now, if, if you want to change them, you can change this, but that doesn't change your master unit subunits here. You can uncheck this and now you have more freedom to change these things. Now you can draw in tenths of a foot, but dimension in inches. So you have that flexibility. So down below, we have alternate label, which allows you to control the behavior, depends on how much the distance is and the dimension. Under scale, this is fun. We have an option to set the scale factor. We're gonna demonstrate that in a little bit. We also have an option to change the dimensioning scale for a reference file. Again, I'll demonstrate that. Now we have secondary units. This is where we could actually have a secondary dimension value show. So we could show it in feet and tens of a foot, and we can also show it in meters and centimeters, and it would display both values. Now there's a tab for text. Here we can tell it to use a specific text style. And if these checkboxes are checked, font, height, and width, this will override whatever your active settings are. If your active font is, let's say, CT font 43, that's bold, doesn't matter. MicroStation will say, I'm going to use CT font 1 because you've overridden it. The same thing is true about height and width. If these are unchecked, it will then look at your active text settings for font, height, and width and use those. Below this is our format for our orientation. We can make our dimension text horizontal or aligned. We also have the option for inline, above, outside, top, left. I'm going to leave it set to inline. Down at the bottom, we have an option to turn on and off fractions being stacked or not. And on the right side, this is where we have our place note tools, because place note, which we talked about in the prior video, has a lot of settings, and this is where we would control them. Now, the last tab here is symbology. 
And this is where, again, just like the text where we could override our active settings for font or height and width, here you can tell it this is the color of my dimension lines, style and weight, and the same thing for extension lines, also for your text and your terminators. This is where you can override those. Again, if these are unchecked, it looks at your active settings and uses those. And down at the bottom, we have a preview. So as we make changes up above, we can then see the changes in the preview. So as an example, my terminator right now is black. So I'm gonna check this and I'm gonna say the terminator should be red. You can see they change to red and I can also change their weight. Let's say something exaggerated like five, you can see it changes those. So again, this is something where if you're looking at your active settings, and you want to use those, then you can, or you can override them. So I'm going to uncheck that, and you see the preview changes back. So we're going to go ahead and close the Dimension Styles dialog. I'm going to move this over. We're going to look at now some of our Angular dimensions. So I'm going to go to my Dimensioning group. I'm going to go to Dimension Angle. On the Tool Settings window, just like before, we have a number of options here. So with one tool, Angular Dimensioning, you have all these choices down here. So we're going to go ahead and look at the first one, which is Angle Size. And I'm going to dimension basically the arc here. What is the angle? So I'm going to pick a start point, And now it wants me to pick the associated point. And that's going to be the center of the arc. So to get there, I'm going to use the center snap, I'm going to on my keyboard, hit the letter C, I'm going to hover over the arc and you can see it finds the center down there. I'm going to do a data and now you see the dimension appearing. I'm going to go to the end point here, I'm going to do a data and it's now looking for me to position the text. So I'm going to come out here, do another data and if I move my cursor over, you can see it wants to continue with another angular dimension. So I'm going to hit reset and now I'm complete. Now the value you're seeing down here, this is angle. If I go to my dimension styles, under units, in the bottom, this is where it was told to display units in angles. And you can see it's degrees, minutes, and seconds. Now for the units, we have two choices. We could say, I want it to be length. If I choose that, you can see it disables the display for angles. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to update this dimension. So we're going to see how we can change or update it to our current settings. So I'm going to come back up to my dimensioning group. I'm going to click on this icon and I'm going to go to change dimension. I'm now going to pick the dimension, the text. I'm going to data to accept. And you can see now it shows me the length opposed to the angle. So you have choices like that. So I'm going to do a couple of undos. We're going to close this. Now that is a design file setting. So if I save settings, next time I go to do an angular dimension, it would show me that. Now I'm going to do a fit view. So shift, right click. I'm going to do a fit view. I have a, an area down below our examples. And we're going to see how we can use scale for elements in our active file and elements that are referenced. Now, doing construction details, it's very common for people to draw their construction details, which could be smaller projects, things like a median or a curve or something like that. And then they have to scale it up to fit on a border. So the border here you can see is 1,100 feet tall, 1,700 feet wide. What we have here is not real world. Up in the top center, I have the original detail, and this is for illustration. I'm going to zoom in on this area, and you're going to see that this is literally one-to-one. -one. This is eight inches. So if I was to go and measure this, now I'm in a drawing that has working units set to feet and tenths of a foot, so I'm going to change that so we can see this. So I'm going to come up to my quick access toolbar at the top, go to design file settings, Category in the left down at the bottom, I'm going to go to working units. And here I'm going to change my format. Instead of just showing me master units, which would be feet and tenths of a foot, I'm going to say show me master units and subunits. And then I'm going to change my subunits from tenths to inches. And then I'm going to click OK. Well, if I measure now, it's going to show me feet and inches. So I'm going to measure the distance between these two points. 
This detail says it should be eight inches. So I'm gonna hit my space bar, third row, first icon, measure, and then I'm gonna to go to measure distance. And I have it set to between points. So I'm gonna pick this point and this other point. And what you're gonna see on the tool settings window, it's gonna say zero feet, eight inches. So that's literally one to one. Let's go ahead and zoom out here. The same area down here, this is the same detail. It was copied and scaled up to fit inside. and was scaled up by 100 to one. So let's measure these two points. You can see it's 66 feet, 7.998 inches. That's not eight inches, that's much, much larger. How do we dimension something like this and make sure that it's accurate? Again, it's been scaled up by a known value, by scaled up by 100. So if I go to my dimensioning tools, I'm gonna to go up to my linear dimensioning, and if I pick these two points, you can see the dimension value that comes in is 66 feet, eight inches. That's the true distance between those two points. That's not the detail size. So if I place that in, you can see that's not correct. Let's go to our dimension styles. Under our units, down here, we have scale factor. It's set to one. If I change this, I'm gonna change this to 0 0.01. That would be the inverse of my scale factor. And if I measure those same two points, you're going to see that it'll produce a dimension that shows me eight inches. So now I can, as long as my detail was drawn proportionally correct and just scaled up, now I can dimension it with dimension tools, have it show the actual value. So there's my actual dimension. Again, that's literally the distance between those two points. This is a scaled dimension. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom out. And over to the right, we have this area up here is referenced into this area. So we're gonna see what if I've referenced in a drawing and I've scaled it. So I'm gonna zoom in. We have the same situation. If I move my cursor over, you're going to see that it is a reference file. And if I dimension this, and if I set this back to one, and there's a checkbox here, it says, reference scale, that's unchecked. So if I dimension these two points, we end up with the same situation where it shows us the distance between those two points in my active file, 66 feet, eight inches. So I'm gonna do an undo. I'm gonna repeat the process, but before I do that, I'm going to go to my dimension styles dialog under the units. I'm gonna check reference scale. Now I'm gonna do the same dimension and it's gonna show me eight inches. In the reference file, the distance between these two points is eight inches, but I've scaled up the attachment to fit inside my border. There's lots more we can cover, but this is a basic intro series. Hopefully that's enough to get you started. So we'll see you in the next video.